Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. That's important. How do I do that? I review the wines, I grade them, and then it's up to you. I review, it's up to you. And just a little bit on the grading system instead of scoring. I know it's really cool to go 100 points and I just think that's all gotten kind of ridiculous, you know. I mean, nobody gives anything less than hardly ever gives anything less than 87 points. I think you can really, with a point system, can really like shoot down a wine. And, you know, I just don't want to do that really. I, I, you know, I think the A through F system is really nice. And as I said before, I got an A in the class, um, sometimes just because the teacher liked me. I mean, I did good work, don't get me wrong, I did good work, but the teacher liked me. So sometimes even if my, my, my papers didn't always come in at A's, um, that teacher would give me an A. And I think that's a, that's a subjectivity of wine. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of critic you think you are. Um, you know, if you, um, you know, if you're, uh, if you like a wine, if it fits your palate, you're going to give it maybe a little bit better uh, points or grades or whatever than it deserves. Just saying, just being honest. Let's get started. I'm continuing on with the theme. I said I was going to do three wines a episode for five episodes. Uh, do 15 wines under... These wines, I think you'll be interested to get my perspective on those wines that you tasted. In other words, you know, a lot of you guys ask me, you know, Stan, what do you think? What's your favorite wine? Well, last episode wasn't really thrilled about those wines, uh, except for number one, the, the white. I really like the uh, Skaya uh, Bianca from uh, Tenuto, Tenuto San Antonio. Great wine for $11. So there you go. Uh, then one out of three. Not the best average. Now we're going to start out with a wine. Uh, not my favorite varietal, as all you know. Pinot Grigio. This is from Italo Sesson. It's from Veneto, Italy, up in the north, sort of north, I guess, east, um, Lake Garda area up there. This rolls in at $13. It's a 2013. Now, Veneto is famous. The best thing they do up there is Amarone, or they do a, a Valpolicella Rapasa, but Amarone is kind of their claim to fame. It gets a lot of bucks for some Amarones, you know, can go for close to 100 or better per bottle. The owner, my boss, uh, is definitely a big Amarone guy. Let's see what we get on the nose with this Pinot Grigio. Getting a banana right off the bat. Banana, right away. If you like bananas, you'll like this. It kind of reminds you like of a banana foster. Or, you know, when you're having a Sunday, a banana split, it, it has that smell to it. Not a lot more than that going on. I get a little bit of melon, perhaps. Now, I take that back. A little bit of a apricot underneath that banana. Little touch of wet stone going on. Pretty interesting nose for a Pinot Grigio. Let's see what we get on the palate. A lot of banana skin element coming through on this one. A little bit of tangerine on the back end. It's a, it's a fairly acidic wine. Now this is um might be a little cold. I don't I as I said before, I tried to drink my wines the way I think you would drink them. I think it's unfair as a critic to drink wines at room temperature, even though I know there's a lot of guys out there that do that and think that's the only way to go to get the aromatics out of it. But I guarantee you, and, and you know, make a comment, by the way. I, I would really love it if you could make a comment. Make this a question of the day. Do you drink your whites at room temperature, or do you drink them colder? Colder. I want to know. Because, you know, I kind of base that on my tasting method because I want to grade the wine the way I think the consumer will taste it. How do you drink your wines? I drink, I, this is at about 48 to 50 degrees right now.
a little melon, a lot of banana skin, touch of whetstone, a little hollow on the mid palate. It's a Pinot Grigio. I get a little bit of that apricot coming through. It's not exciting. It's $13. It's a cool bottle though. I don't know if you notice it. I forgot what uh, the sales rep said this was all about, but a little piece of wood tied to a ribbon. Kind of a cool bottle, definitely. It's Pinot Grigio, definitely. Nothing exciting about it. It's not the worst Pinot Grigio I've ever had. It's still very thin on the finish. There's not a lot going on with that. I'm going to go C+. Plus. Let's move on to the next one. Now, you notice these are, I've got decanters out here. The reason for that is that I forgot to open the bottles before I went to work this morning. So I put them in these jugs, give them a little swirl. I do, now, I know, again, the national average, they say that people go home and they drink the bottle within an hour after they open it. So we know a lot of you out there do not decant your wines. And I don't expect you to, to do so. Being in the wine business, you know, I tend to get things like decanters, both of these. I, I have not never bought a decanter. This was a gift from a friend of mine. I believe that was a gift from a friend. I have another one somewhere that was also a gift. So I haven't had to buy a decanter, but I do like to decant my wines from time to time, especially big, bold wines like Chateauneuf de Pop and Barolos and Barbarescos and, you know, maybe a, 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 a Brunello de Montalcino. Those are all wines that you might want to throw in a decanter, and I do decant those um, before I drink them. But it's not something that I know that a lot of you do. So, I again, I try to taste the wines like I think you would taste them. So I threw this in a decanter. Oh, uh, I made a mess there. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I just try not to touch it. I didn't get any of my pants. That's the main thing, right? Anyway, sloshing it around. It doesn't take much. They do the, uh, the, the um, as Sarah and Sparky Marquis call it, the Molly Duker shake. They pour a little bit out in the glass. Take the bottle. They shake it up. It just takes a little bit of action. Get it stirred up. That's what you need to do. So here's what we're tasting right now. This one rolls in at $11. Uh, Albera from Araldica, Barbera di Asti from the town of Asti up in northern uh, Italy in the Piedmont region. And this is, uh, like I said, $11. And this is a, what did I say, 2012. So to show you the label, there you go. Pretty simple label, purple. There you go. 11 bucks. By the way, I've, I've talked about this many, many times. Kermit Lynch, I had a chance to talk with him a little bit. Love Kermit Lynch, nice guy. And he said when he was, whenever he goes up to Northern Italy, he's always, he's, when he's invited to dinner at the winemaker's home, they pull out Barbera. That's what they drink. That's their food wine, that's their table red. Let's see what we get on the nose. Now this has definitely got a little funk on the nose, a little old world action. A little dirt with a little manure in it. I get mushrooms on this one, big time. Uh, I also get some fruit, I get some currants. But definitely a little more of the earth, forest floor kind of manure thing going on with a little bit of the currants and blackberries. Even a little touch of black licorice, more like the natural kind of licorice, like the panda licorice. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good acidity, first, I want to say that first off. The earth notes come through big time. There is currants on this. I get more fruit on the palate than I do on the nose, which I, I know a lot of you will like. I get a little bit of black raspberry coming through on the backside. The earth really comes through 
on the back of the finish, a little tobacco. I get the licorice. It's very mineral. There's a lot of minerals on this one, especially on the back of the palate. Kind of hangs on. The only flaw I see in this wine, personally, is right up front. It's just like there's nothing there. It takes a while. It takes the finish for this wine to really say, okay, here I am. Right up front, though, a little bit shy, and then it comes out. I, You know, for, for 11 bucks, I think this is a really good play. This would be really good pizza, burger wine. You know, if you're having a little lasagna, whatever you're doing, it, it would be really good with that. Not bad for 11 bucks. I think the initial attack is kind of disappointing right up front of the palate. I'm going to go C plus B minus on that wine. Let's move on to the next one. A little bit better than yesterday, I thought, except for the Grigio. It doesn't, didn't excite me. Sorry about that. Skaya, 2012 Corvina from Tenuta San Antonio. So this is the red version of what we had in the last episode, and I'll show you the label. Very much like it's a uh, sibling, but darker, which makes sense. It's a red wine, right? Corvina is one of the main grapes of Amarone. Rondinella is also one that they use in, in Amarone. They use a couple other grapes, but mostly Corvina. They dry it out. Um, by the way, it has a uh, glass cork, which is kind of cool. So Corvina, they dry out for three up to three months, then they press it, gives it a real raisiny quality. Um, but this is not done that way. They do not rip, do, pass it over or a pasamento, pass it over the grape skins. They don't do any of that. This is just straight up Corvina from the same Veneto, same area where the Pinot Grigio came from. All right. So this has a little bit of a interesting, almost like a brickish color. Not brickish, we know because it's not a, a, it's a 2012. But it's a little on the dark side with a little bit of um, more on the, um, not brown, but you, in that direction. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> Almonds all day. That's so weird, like almonds. It smells just like almonds with a little bit of cinnamon, which is really a cool nose. I'm even getting a little walnut. Wow, that's the most like nutty nose I've ever, in a long time, that I've had on a wine where that almond just jumped out at me. Getting a hint of um, maybe asparagus, maybe a little grass coming through. Definitely like wet stone, like a, a little bit of wet gravel on the nose. Not a ton of fruit. The almonds and walnuts are incredible on this wine. Really intriguing to me. With that cinnamon edge. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. A little curious. Not a lot of fruit on the nose. I mean, there's fruit there, but I just can't identify exactly what that fruit is. Let's see what we get in the mouth. much more fruit on the mouth. I get a, a really like black plum versus, with currants coming through. A little bit of underlying uh, maybe cassis in there. Very, very nice on the palate. Very smooth tannins. I get a little minerality on the back end. It's funny, I don't get the almond. I get a little bit of walnut meat on it, but the almonds do not show up on the palate. like a, a orange coming through on the back end of this wine a little bit of bark not a ton just a, a touch of bark 
very good wine. I mean, this is a wine, you know, and again, this is $11. I don't think I mentioned that. I'm, I'm out of my groove on this price thing. You know, it's not like it, what's well, 100 and close to 180 episodes, and I still miss some of the details, which is really weird. That's when I feel the most like my sister, <laughs> Deanna. Love you, sis. Love you, big sis. But sometimes, man, I'm telling you, us, uh, us rattan kids, we tend to lose track of things sometimes it's just genetic I mean I've been talking I've talked to my dad and he doesn't even finish his sentence sometimes um, very smart man very smart very gifted man but you know sometimes he doesn't finish sentence he finishes sentences so we have to be I have to be on top of it all the time I just can feel it genetically I, I miss some steps this is a great bottle of wine for eleven dollars it's got a lot of fruit, a little minerality, it's got a little bit of old world, well, a lot of old world with a little bit of new world action in it. Um, again, really good burger wine. Nice balance. I think a lot of you out there will like this wine. Even some sweet tannins coming through. The finish has a little tobacco on it. There's a lot of elements in this wine, front to back, it's fairly seamless. It's not a huge wine, it doesn't have a ton of complexity, but I'm going to go B on this wine. I think it's a really good wine. It's way above average um, for the money. Um, the finished, uh, you know, finish thins out, but it still has a good finish, and I think that's a positive. So, you know, the way this wine is going to show better for you is if you throw it into something, throw it in a pitcher, throw it in a mason jar, shake it up, pour it into your glass and back into the bottle. Shake it up, that'll help. Just a little tip on uh, getting the most out of your red wines. Yeah, the plum notes are really amazing on this one. Get a little bit of almond skin on the back side. The walnut element, the walnut meat element is there front to back. Cool wine, I love it, Corvina. The main grape of Amarone for 11 bucks. Give it a whirl if you get a chance. Good stuff. Thanks for watching. And remember, wine is not a mystery. It is just grape juice. Learn your palate. Trust your palate. And never let anybody tell you what you should or shouldn't like. You figure that out for yourself. And if we do that together, we can take the snob out of wine.